In this video, I'm going to be talking about a projectile basketball problem. If you take a look at our diagram over here, we have a person shooting the basketball 40 degrees from the horizontal upward towards a three meter tall hoop, two meters off the ground from five meters away from the basketball hoop. We're going to figure out a few things. The first thing we're going to solve for is the um, initial velocity, which is pretty difficult in this case because there's a lot of factors involved in this problem that aren't typically involved with the average projectile problem. So if you see over here, I have my original vector, which is my VI, my original initial velocity that I'm looking for. I broke it up into the two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component, which I called VX and VY. Now, this problem has a lot of unknowns. Typically, if you have the VI, you can find the components and then everything kind of comes together from there. Um, but if you don't have the VI, the problem can be pretty difficult. So instead of putting VX, we know a little bit of information about VX. We know that VX is eventually VI times the cosine of 40, which I showed a little bit of the work here of how I got that. And then my VY is VI sine of 40 same reason by using a little bit of trig and then kind of rearranging it so that we have something in terms of vi for the y component and something in terms of vi for the x component so what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple pieces of information to help us out along with the two things that i wrote on the bottom over here and we're going to use the formula delta y equals the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Now we're gonna have to be, do a little bit of substitution here. So for our delta y, that is our change in our vertical displacement. Um, so we starting at two meters and then we're going upwards to three meters. So the delta y is one meter because it's rising up one meter from its original position. Now for the vi, uh, we don't have anything to represent that. So we want the VI in the Y direction, in the vertical direction. So we're going to go ahead and grab this over here and substitute out the VI for VI sine of 40 degrees. So that's going to re represent my VI. And then we don't know the T, so we're going to go ahead and put the T in there. And then plus one half, and we know our acceleration due to gravity in the vertical direction is always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we still don't know the time, so I'm gonna go ahead and write T squared there. All right, so what we can do is um, we can go ahead and do a little bit of rearranging to solve for what we need. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, do a substitution for time because we have two unknowns, a VI and a T. So if we could solve for T in terms of VI, then VI will be our only unknown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the constant velocity formula, delta X over T equals V. So in the horizontal direction, we can use a constant velocity formula because there are no forces acting in the horizontal direction once the ball is released. So the ball is gonna be moving horizontally in a constant motion. So the delta X is gonna be five and the T is our unknown and the velocity in the X direction is right over here. So we're gonna go ahead and change that velocity to a VI cosine of 40 degrees. So we can just go ahead and cross multiply those two and then five over VI cosine of 40 degrees equals our T. So now we have something to substitute in for the T that's gonna be in terms of VI, so which would leave us with one unknown, and then we could just do a little bit of algebra to solve for our VI. So I'm gonna grab this T over here, and I'm gonna sub in five over VI 
times cosine of 40 degrees. Um, so let's go ahead and rewrite this whole entire expression here. All right, so what I did is I just dropped on my one, I dropped on my VI sine of 40 degrees, I subbed in my five over VI cosine of 40 for T right over here. I simplified the one half times negative 9.8 to negative 4.9 just by multiplying the two. And then I have one more T, but it's squared. So I just squared all of the things um, that I wrote down over here. So five squared is 25. My VI, I squared it and my cosine of 40 degrees, I squared it. Now, when you're taking a look at this setup right here, it looks pretty complicated because there's a lot of trig functions. There's some square values. It's not quite as complex as it looks. As um, you see it now, there are a lot of trig functions, but remember, trig functions are just numbers, mostly numbers that we don't know off the top of our head, like sine of 40 degrees and cosine of 40 degrees. So what we can do is we can go ahead and cancel out this VI because it's VI divided by VI and then sine of 40 times five divided by cosine of 40 leaves us with four point two. For our second part, I'm just gonna put a minus sign here because we have a negative here. We can do 4.9 times 25 and then divide that by cosine of 40 squared which leaves us with 207.63. And the VI squared is still gonna be on the bottom there because that's our unknown. So it simplified down quite a bit because a lot of what we had were just numerical values, but numerical valuable, excuse me, numerical values that we could simplify. So again, I took the sine of 40 times five divided by cosine of 40 degrees. It gave me a single value of 4.2. Over here, I took the 4.9 times 25 divided by cosine of 40 degrees squared. That left me with 207.63, dropped the VI squared on the bottom. So if I go ahead and subtract the 4.2 from both sides, then it leaves me with um, negative 3.2 on the left side of the equal sign. And then on the right side of the equal sign, I still have my negative 207.63 divided by VI squared. So I can go ahead and cross multiply these two. And then since we have two negative numbers divided by one another, I'm going to get a positive number, which is good because I need to square root it and I can't square root a negative number. So I'm going to square root my VI squared and square root this value over here. And then my value for VI comes out to 8.05 meters per second. Okay, so we had a lot of substitution going on um, and a lot of just busy work towards the end, doing a little bit of algebra, simplifying some expressions, and then ending up with a final velocity of 8.05 meters per second. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my original picture. And then for the second part of my problem, uh, I'm going to solve for a few more values. I'm going to solve for the time. I'm going to solve for the final velocity that the basketball goes through the hoop along with the angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for time. And what I did was I erased some of my work just to give myself a little bit more space. But I did notice that I had a formula that I kind of set up earlier that um, would give me time. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And I have 5 over VI, which I know is 8.05 meters per second now times cosine of 40 degrees 
and then my time comes out to 0 0.81 seconds. Now we're going to find that final velocity going through the hoop. Now it's going to go through at an angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the horizontal component and the vertical component. And then combine those two using Pythagorean theorem, and then we'll be able to solve for our final velocity going through the hoop. So for our Vx, our horizontal component, that one's going to be pretty simple because, as I said before, the horizontal motion is constant because there are no forces acting in the horizontal direction once the ball is released. So we can go ahead and say that the velocity is, and I'll just take this original formula over here, is delta x over t. And that gives me 6.17 meters per second. Now for the Y component, um, what I can do is I want to use an accelerated motion formula because the motion moving up and down is accelerating because of gravity acting in the vertical direction. So if I want a final velocity, I can do VI plus A times T. And I'm looking for my VF, so I'm going to go ahead and write VF. My VI... Um, in the vertical direction is 8.05, which is my initial velocity, but times the sine of 40 degrees, okay, as I set up over here. So that's my VI, and then plus, and then my acceleration, as usual, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared for something that's in free fall motion, times time, which is 0.81 seconds. All right, so what I can do from there is take 8.05 times the sine of 40 and then add that to negative 9.8 times 0.81, and then I get a final velocity of negative 2.77 meters per second. Now that velocity is going to be fairly small because the ball is going to go up to its peak and then from its peak it's only going to come down somewhat until it hits the hoop, so it's not going to come all the way back down towards the ground. So I have the two pieces that I wanted, so I can go ahead and put those together now. So now we have all the information we need to find our final velocity. Our final velocity is our angled component, which is our hypotenuse of our triangle. And our horizontal component is this 6.17. And then our vertical component is this one over here, the one that is going downwards, 2.77 meters per second. Okay, so what we can do is go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, and the Pythagorean theorem will give us the hypotenuse, which is the final velocity. So after using the Pythagorean theorem, I took 6.17 squared plus 2.77 squared, or negative 2.77 squared, which is the same number, square root of both sides, and then I got a final velocity of 6.76 meters per second. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for the angle. And the angle below the horizontal um, is going to give us our final theta, final theta value. So we can use a bunch of different values. Um, the one I'm going to use is the inverse tangent function, um, but it doesn't really matter which one you want to use. So if I go opposite of my angle, I get negative 2.77. And then over the adjacent, my adjacent side is 6.17. That gives me an angle of negative 24.18 degrees. 
So we can pretty much just call that 24.18 degrees below the horizontal, and that gives us our angle at which the ball is entering through the hoop. So as I said before, you could have used an inverse sine function or an inverse cosine function because we have all the sides of a triangle. So using the inverse tangent was just a random choice of mine. Um, either way, you're still going to get the same angle as long as you place the numbers in the right spot. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up and solve for the VI, the T, the final velocity, and the angle. Thank you for watching and listening.